Hey everyone, so there's a combination of five letters and numbers that all resellers need to know about because they could help you make hundreds of dollars to over a thousand dollars in sales based on one item or a small combination of items related to this letter number combo. In fact, I'm going to show you a follow-up to the spring sourcing video that I premiered last week in which I bought three such items for $6 and sold them within a few days for $250. And I'm gonna do a video breakdown for you also. We're gonna go back to the scene and I'm gonna show you why it is that 47 other people ahead of me in line, many of whom were resellers, missed these items. So first, before I do that, let me go over the letter number combo with you. So give me a T if you want to participate out there. Give me a T. <laughs> give me an R. There we got an R. Give me an S. All right. And give me an eight. And give me a zero. What's that spell? TRS80. The TRS-80 is one of the first mass-produced, mass-marketed desktop computer systems, came out in 1977, was manufactured by Tandy, which is what the T stands for, and sold by Radio Shack. That's how we get the RS here. The 80 stands for the Z80 microprocessor. So... The reason I'm writing it out like this and telling you the breakdown in this way is because I think it will help you remember it more if it's not something you were familiar with ahead of time. So let me show you the uh, item, or I should say group of items that I sold together for the 250. So I'm going to share my screen here. And it's this. So some of you may remember it. So we've got this book right here. You could see there it says TRS-80 and other mysteries up top. Now that book in and of itself, if I just had that, that's about a $30 book or so. Uh, but it's the items down here that really helped add value uh, to this set. And it's these two Microsoft binders. Now you might say, hey, wait a minute, it says Microsoft on it, doesn't say TRS-80 anywhere on there. Well, that's why you have to open it up and look inside. That's part of what treasure hunting is all about. And when you do that, you're going to see here, it says on the first page, Microsoft TRS-80 assembly language development system. And it's related to the Fortran's uh, computer language, which we don't have to go into that. But the point is, is that now we've got a combination of a very popular uh, home-based uh, computer system, and we've got early vintage Microsoft. You could tell that from the logo on the front and as you'll see on the side of the binder, and you could see down there, it says Microsoft 1978. Microsoft as a company uh, came out in 1975. So this is very, very early. So I know here, by the way, it says $499.99. If you want, I took a best offer. Uh, basically, there's no comps for an item like this. It does not come up on the market, a uh, period. There's just no other examples that I could find of these types of binders. Um, you know, the book again is kind of ancillary. Uh, so when Carl, and many of you know Carl Bach here on the channel, when he saw it, he reached out to me and he said, Hey, you should just put some crazy high price on it. So you can either do that or you could auction it. Uh, it's so niche, so niche that I didn't want to auction it and run the risk that only one person who really wanted it would see it and then get it for a low price. So I did. I put the crazy high price on it, $500. A person offered me $180. I counteroffered at like $330. And then the person counteroffered me at $250. And I just took it, you know, after all, for a $6 investment for something with no comps. Uh, you know, absolutely. I I'll definitely take that. So by the way, I have, I've said this before, but let me show you this in action. If you want to see what the best offer price accepted was, just right click the mouse and hit view page source and then do control F and type in tax X. I've already typed it in here and then just search for it and you'll see it'll highlight it. To the left of it, it says BIN price only $499.99. That's the buy it now price. The tax exclusive price is what I sold it for. That's the best offer I accepted. 
$250. So that is a very quick, easy way to figure this out. Now let's go and do a video dissection of just some aspects of this that help understand why people miss certain things. So this is one view of this warehouse that I was in trying to find all these vintage items. Now in the beginning of the of the video, you saw me sourcing all these like Dr. Seuss books and manga books and stuff. That was at this bookshelf right over here. Now the entrance was over behind this white area. So this is where people come in and then there's the bookshelf over here. So you could see here, we've got someone standing in the middle area. So, or close to the middle area. So there, cause there's another whole wall here, right on this side that people walk down. And then we've got this wall over here. Well, the media section where I found this book and the binders was right over in this area. So let me actually show you a closer up view of things. So again, here's the area where we've got the bookshelf. Okay. And what do we see here? We've got two people that are standing right over here. Again, more towards the center area. People tend to do that. People tend to have tunnel vision when they are looking at things at sales. They look at what's right in front of them and they tend to cluster in the middle and they tend to cluster near each other. So what you've got to do is you've got to look outside of that and you've got to look at the places where people are not normally going. So that's one thing. Make sure you're looking at your peripheries. I often talk about looking up at the ceiling, looking down at the floor, uh, looking up on the walls for things uh, that other people might be missing. So now if we go over here. This is actually where the binders were located and where the book is. Now you could see here that the sides of the binders would be difficult to see uh, because they're obscured partly by the post. You also notice that we are one, two, three, four, four shelves up. So it's relatively high for some people. And so that's another reason why people can miss things, things that are higher up. I mean, granted, there is one shelf even higher than that and things that are very low. So even if you do find your way over here, people tend to ignore things or not look deeply into uh, items that are on upper shelves or bottom shelves or things that are covered up by something. So let me press play here. Now you could see here, I could see by peeking over that this says TRS 80. So that is what initially drew my interest into this. So we'll go like this, take it out, say, oh, okay. But then underneath it, uh, now this is me just flipping through the book itself. So this is what it looks like inside. But then underneath it, because it was right near the TRS 80 item. There's a saying of when there's smoke, there's fire. So there is a chance that this may be related uh, to it in some way. You don't just want to look at it, just see that it says, you know, Microsoft on and say, oh, well, it can't possibly be related to the TRS 80. Besides that, even if it wasn't, when was the last time you ever saw that Microsoft logo? I, I have not seen that in any time in recent memory, if ever before. So that in and of itself should pique your interest. But you know, like I said, you've got to take these things off the shelves, then you've got to open them up and you've got to take a look inside. Now, one of the other cool things about this is you'll see there on that first page, it said non-disclosure agreement. If you pause it, that is not something that often shows up. That indicates that this is something that went to someone that was not supposed to share anything about this at the time uh, that they had it. So you got to be, you got to be really careful uh, with the materials inside, or you know, potentially Microsoft uh, could come after you. So there, you could see there the second binder was 1979. So right there, I knew I had some really cool. Uh, vintage items there. And as I was talking about in the video, I knew that, hey, listen, I could sell this as a set. You know, you could hear me talking about that in the video. And then the other cool thing is that from a display perspective, what also helped these items out is that it, if you're going to put these on your bookshelf and it has the old Microsoft logo on the side too, because that's how people are generally going to display it. That's another big selling point to someone who collects that type of stuff 
and would be uh, interested in obtaining it. Because if it, if it just had a plain side, I think it would be less valuable because all you would have is this, and this is tougher to display uh, frontward. So look for those side uh, bindings. If there's anything on there that's decorative, uh, that someone might want to display, that could be really helpful. But I think overall, people miss these because of where they were located uh, in the store, both on the side or the warehouse, both that it was on the side wall, that it was up top, that the binder was partly obscured, and that it didn't say uh, TRS-80 um, plainly on the binders. Uh, so all those things, I think, factored into it. And then there probably were a bunch of people that weren't familiar with TRS-80. Uh, to show you a few other things related to TRS-80, I talked about this in the video. I said, if you ever see the game Microsoft Adventure, you definitely want to pick this up. This is an old game that was played through the TRS-80. You might be able to see that on the sticker up top. It says for TRS-80. Very hard to find something like this. I mean, frankly, I would have picked it up anyway, even if it doesn't say TRS-80 because of this cool winged dragon on top of it. I mean, that thing is really cool. But that sold for close to a $1,000. That's not a you know something where a best offer was accepted afterward. That's the actual sold price from an auction. Anything gaming related to the TRS-80 will go for high dollar amounts. Now, this is something that will sell for over $1,000. This is the actual or one of the models for the TRS-80. You could see it right here. Someone actually reached out to me on Instagram and said to me that they actually had one of these uh, TRS-80s and they need to get it listed. They were just nervous about ship shipping it. But um, you basically just have to pad it properly and make sure you're double boxing it. And, um, you know, shouldn't be any problem shipping this out uh, because it is relatively compact. I mean, obviously it's not a tiny item, but, uh, you know, it's also not like you're selling a big giant, uh, massive tube TV. Uh, it's, um, you know, it, it's something that you could definitely get a nice sturdy box for double box it, get it out there, protect it properly. That's a $1,250 sale plus $85 dollars shipping. You could also see that the TRS-80 had a, a cassette player that was associated with it. So sometimes you will see cassettes related to it, like this game right here. Uh, this is a cassette-based game that played through the computer. Uh, this one was called Adventure. It originally sold for $5. You could see the stock price there. It now sells, if you could find this, $250. It just, it's just crazy. Uh, TRS-80 related game. Uh, it does say right there on the bottom, right below the red there, it says TRS-80 uh, level 216K. So you'll, you got to look for that, that letter number combo there. Here's another example of a video game. Uh, that sold on auction, uh, only one bid, but sold for $500, destroy all subs. Again, TRS-80, you see there on the top left. Look for that combo over and over. It's really going to help you out. Uh, they also had other products that they manufactured through the TRS-80 uh, name. So this is a portable computer, Model 100. You ever come across something like this? You know, this could be about a $300 item. Again, you're looking for TRS-80 and you're going to see Radio Shack uh, associated with it. And you could even see that here in the close-up. It says Radio Shack TRS-80. I mean, they had their brand name all over that. So uh, I hope that all these things help you out and they give you some good information. Remember, say it after me. TRS-80. So that could really help you. Um, in terms of just some other things I've got going on um, tonight, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I've got the members only live sh show for Platinum and Priority members. If you haven't checked out membership, uh, you could check it out uh, right here. Uh, the lowest level is $1.99 a month. If you find that videos like this help you, that other videos that I have done uh, for you has been over 850 in total, have helped you make money, have helped your business, uh, consider supporting the channel uh, through membership. You get these fun little emojis like the Mountain Dew to Fred Sanford, the Cookie Monster, the Pink Panther, of course, Daisy, which is like the most popular one, Godzilla, 
primetime treasure hunter one you get these little loyalty badges you get to see the videos an hour early there's other perks as well uh, you just check out the link uh down below in the description section you'll see more about it or just click the join button uh, on the channel so i'll see uh, a lot of people tonight uh it's up oh, i I maybe make sure I said the right time. 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tonight. 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tonight for the live show. Okay, so um, one of the things that I do for members is I help them. Uh, you know, they help me. I'm, I try to help them as well. Uh, so I do give a shout out to all members. I'll put a link to their uh store their ebay store or if they have another store like poshmark i'll put it in the description section and in the comments so i want to shout out matt from msg's treasures go check out his ebay store uh he's got uh, almost two thousand items going on now i mean his business is really really growing and he's just doing an amazing job so thanks matt for all of your support he is a platinum member of the channel and i also want to share with you uh, Matt was partly inspired by this channel. I've been bugging him for a while to start a YouTube channel and he did that. So he's got over 200 subscribers now. So go check out Matt. Here he is. And, uh, go give him a, go give him a sub and tell him that prime time sent you over there. He's got, if you love storage unit stuff, he does a ton of that. So it's a lot of fun. Uh, two other things going on. I've got the Don and Dom show. We're going to talk about increasing your eBay sales with new niches or niches. Uh, that's going to be Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then uh, we've got the Chichingathon where you could actually make money in the chat. That's going to be Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You get to compete against another uh, seller if you're selected. So it's a lot of fun. We'll do some auctions. We'll have uh, exclusives, exclusive deal. Uh, we're going to do giveaway for support that seller Sunday. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. But uh, again, hope to see some of you tonight at the members only live show, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Hope you like the video. If so, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. I will see everyone at the next one. Take care. Oh, thanks, Laura Cohn, by the way, for this awesome Captain America shirt that I bought from you. Love it. It's a great jacket. Thanks. <laughs> Bye, everyone.